Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Tigers win it back on sun Saturday, 44-21 uh, to 21 in the home opener. Um, some good stuff, some not so good stuff. Um, I'll start with some of the stuff that I really liked, and then we'll get into some of the stuff that I, I didn't like as much. Um, I felt like my column after the game was a little bit negatively slanted, but uh, that's kind of what you get when you let Nichols hang around into the third quarter. <laughs> like that just shouldn't uh, shouldn't happen, and it did. But LSU did salt the game away and, and was able to win it, 44-21, as I mentioned. I thought Garrett Nussmeyer really looked good. Uh, I think he uh, looks comfortable back there. I think he's got plenty of arm talent. I think he's uh, completing a lot of balls at a lot of different areas of the field to a lot of different players. Um, I'm a little bit concerned with the backpedaling, backpedaling, and backpedaling, but in doing that, he's being very patient, uh, and he's getting the ball out um, of his hands, and he's, he's been very, very accurate. In this game, 27 out of 37 for 302 yards and six touchdowns. Of course, the six touchdowns, the second most ever uh, in a game. He joins two guys by the name of Joe Burrow and Jaden Daniels as quarterbacks to throw for six touchdowns at in a single game at LSU. You keep that company, you're, you're doing things pretty well. Um, he did not throw an interception. He has only thrown one interception through two games on the year, um, and that was, of course, the last play that LSU ran on offense against Southern Cal where they were trying to run a 30 lateral play at the end of the game to score a touchdown. So in in actual functional game snaps, Garrett Nussmeyer has not really put the ball in harm's way at all. He's been efficient. He's been effective. Uh, and LSU's passing game is very good. And that's a good thing, obviously, but it has to be because they're just not able – to create consistent push running the football. And we don't have the sound that Brian Kelly gave today. Um, I'll paraphrase, and then we'll probably play some for you uh, tomorrow, and certainly Matt will later on his show today. But basically, Brian Kelly came in and said today, like, I'm not concerned, and, and trust me, I'm paraphrasing this. These are not direct quotes. He said, I'm not really concerned with our inability to run the football. This is all a function of the way teams are defending us. They are putting a lot of players in the box, they are stacking the front, and they are daring us to throw um, with a lot of cover one, and we're going to take advantage of that matchup. we got good wide receivers. We've got good tight ends. We've got a good quarterback. We pass block really well. We're going to test you on the edge, and, and it's hard to disagree a ton with Brian Kelly because they are moving the football consistently. Like that, They are moving the ball a lot. They moved the ball for a ton of yards against Nichols. Um, and they moved the ball for a ton of yards against USC. You know, they didn't get into the end zone as much as you'd like to see against USC, and they've got to figure that out. But he's he's saying that they're not struggling to run the ball because they can't get a push. They're struggling to run the ball because they're calling more pass plays based on what the defense is giving you. Kelly went as far to say that, like, look, I guarantee you if South Carolina comes out and goes three down linemen and plays a bunch of cover two, like, we're going to run the football. And I hope he's right. But as I look at LSU right now, I look at a team that is struggling to create any sort of momentum up front, and I don't think that's just a function of all eight-man boxes. Like, I'm not going to go back and check every single snap and count the players in the box, but it doesn't feel like teams are playing LSU the way they played them in the early Les Miles era. Like, it doesn't feel that way. It feels like when LSU calls a run play, they don't really get much push. And you've got a situation where you you run the football 21 times against Nichols. 19 of those were, well, I guess I would say 18 of those were probably called runs. And that is light. You've got Ricky Collins ran it twice and Garrett Nussmeyer ran it twice. So you've got 17 or 18 of those that were called runs. Um, and your long against Nichols was 12 yards. Like, how many times have we watched LSU play non-conference opponents in that game? You always bust some runs. Because you're bigger and faster and stronger, and, and LSU wasn't able to do that. Caleb Jackson had nine carries for 19 yards. He had one for nine, and then the other eight carries went for 10 yards. I, I, that's just not an acceptable output to me. And Caleb Jackson is built for that old-fashioned Les Miles offense where you get him the ball moving downhill, you give him a little bit of a hole, and all of a sudden he gets that momentum up and he can he can bowl over people and run away from some people. Well, he's never able to get any momentum going because he gets hit in the backfield on every run. Like, that's just his math. If he had eight runs for 10 yards, you're quite literally never getting two yards down the field. 
So he can't create that momentum and, and establish that running game. I understand what Brian Kelly is saying. You've got four quarterback runs, so that means we're talking about 44 pass calls to 17 runs. Like, that part makes sense because you're looking at the number saying, okay, they are throwing it a lot more. But I don't care if you run it 35 times or 18 times. What's the average yards per carry? And LSU is not establishing any sort of run game. They averaged three yards per attempt on nickels. In one of their 12-yard runs, there were two of them, was Garrett Nussmeyer on a called pass. So the run game to me is just completely ineffective, and that is a significant problem. Now, the flip of that is it appears that LSU's kind of got an identity, and the identity is that you're going to be a really good passing team that struggles to sustain a ground game. You're going to be, and I use air quotes here, a finesse offense. Now, finesse offenses can score a lot of points. Like, you can throw it around and and pile up points. Mike Leach piled up a bunch of points. He just did, and that is a finesse offense. You can win games as a finesse team. You can't win championships as a finesse team because if you don't establish a run of some sort, you're not going to be a championship caliber team. And so right now, I think it's clear to everyone that LSU is not exactly a championship caliber team. They lost to USC, and they were up two points on Nichols in the third quarter. But I do believe they can be an effective offense leaning on the pass game significantly more than running in. They just got to get better running the football. Um, as far as the defense goes in this game, um, I just thought it was a, a bad effort. I mean, just a bad effort. You force the punt that they snap over the punter's head in the first drive, and then you allow Nichols to just embark on these long scoring drives. They go 84 yards on 13 plays for a touchdown. They get the ball right back. They go 75 yards on 13 plays for a touchdown. They weren't really trying to do anything at the end of the half. They tried to run the ball, and LSU did stop them there, so they punted right there. But then they got the ball to start the third quarter, and they went 75 more yards, and almost all of it was on the one run, right up the gut of the LSU defense. Like, Nichols did not have an incompletion in the first half. Not a single incompletion. And then they were running the ball effectively. Like, you weren't taking anything away from Nichols. And that's really concerning to me. I thought LSU's defensive backs against USC were competitive. It wasn't great. Miller Moss threw for a lot of yards, and USC moved the ball. But they did get their hands on some passes. They did knock the ball away a few times. They were they seemed to be present against USC. Nichols kind of got whatever they wanted. And it wasn't just the defensive backs that weren't making plays on the ball. The front wasn't making plays in the backfield against Nichols. Nichols ran the football, turned it around and handed it off, or quarterback ran it 38 times in this game. You know how many tackles for loss LSU had on 38 running plays? Two. Two. You got to think that LSU could get back there, be a little bit more disrupted than that on the running plays. I get you're not going to have a bunch of sacks in this game if you're LSU. Nichols was snapping the ball to McQuaid, and he was getting rid of it really quick. And plus, he only threw it 16 times, and they ran some some trickeration passes. So there were 22 total pass attempts in the game for Nichols. But I'm not mad that they didn't have a lot of hurries or sacks. That wasn't going to be really possible in this game against Nichols. Nichols knew they were probably going to be overmatched at the point of attack, and they were going to have to do some quick game on the outside. But you would think on 38 running attempts that you would get in the backfield more than twice. And LSU did not. And that is a huge, huge concern at this point. I think LSU is pretty good in the pass rush game. I think LSU's really good in the passing game on offense. But when you start coming down into the trenches, I think LSU is in a little bit of trouble on the defensive tackle. We'll talk about it in a second. And I think LSU is really struggling to run the ball despite what Brian Kelly has to say. So... To me, all these ingredients kind of add up, and you're looking at a team, in my estimation, that is a finesse team. And that's a recipe for some real trouble against some of the teams you're going to see on this SEC schedule. I don't want to make too much about the Nichols game. It's a weird deal. You're playing an FCS team. You're coming off a huge national spotlight opener that disappoints you. Brian Kelly said the team looked tired and didn't have quite the snap. 
And okay, fine, they didn't get home till 5 o'clock in the morning on Monday and then had to go to practice the next day. Like, I, I get all that. I, I want to, As a side note, would suggest maybe don't schedule a trip to Ireland if your team's struggling to come home from Vegas. But that's a story for another day. Um, I'm not going to make too much out of the Nichols game. I'll make more about the South Carolina game and certainly pair that with the USC game from last week. But what I saw was a little bit discouraging outside of, man, LSU's passing game is is good, and it's fun to watch, and I think it's going to be consistent and good all year long. A little bit nervous when Garrett Nussmeyer went out at the end of the first half. A little bit nervous. Um, but he came back in the game and, and had a really good night throwing the football. So LSU wins it 44-21. to We'll have some more to talk about it with this game uh, as we move forward in our number one. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.